Hi, Hi, I am Michelle Chula-Lipkin, the Executive Director of the National Association for Media Literacy Education. Um, we are a national membership organization dedicated to media literacy as a basic life skill in the 21st century. Um, welcome to tonight's Hangout, where we're going to be talking about the Media Arts Standards with Dane Olson, who is the Media Arts Standards Writing Chair. Um, we want to spend most of the time um, with Dane talking with all of us about the standards, and then we'll have some opportunity for questions. So I'm going to hand it right over to Dane to start the presentation. Okay. Thanks so much. I'm going to go through a, a little step here to share my screen. And uh, hopefully this goes on without a glitch. Let me know immediately if things are working. Am I full screen with the presentation? Yep, yep. You, you. Started off on the wrong page. So thank you. Thanks for this opportunity to present to me. I am, as Michelle said, I am the Media Arts Writing Chair for the National Coalition for Core Arts Standards, uh, otherwise known as NCAS. I'm currently a middle school media arts teacher in East LA, where I'm developing a new program there using some of their older technology, uh, 2003 Windows XP computers, which has been interesting, and I've learned a lot. And that's going well. I'm also teaching at a couple of higher education institutions, including the Vermont College of Fine Arts. I've been a media arts teacher for over 25 years, both in schools and as a teaching artist. And I've been a content specialist and administrator within LAUSD, uh, Los Angeles Unified School District, having developed media arts standards and 14 programs there at middle and high schools. I'll be very briefly introducing media arts standards and education today, showing a couple of examples and touching on the discipline's inclusion of media literacy as an important core component and outcome for students. Media arts practice has great promise within our media-based society. Given that there is a growing accessibility to the tools and processes of media production and distribution. In essence, media arts is the new printing press of our age. Yet we still tend to be passive, uh, one could say even voracious consumers of content. Uh, given these statistics, how is it possible for the average citizen to consume over 15 hours of content a day. Well, we're multitasking on multiple screens, which shows an intensive capacity to view and interact with multimedia and simultaneous layers of information. It's becoming the new norm to have continual multi-sensory stimulation. I know as a middle school teacher and parent how available and unrestrained any and all content is to young people today. And this media is increasingly powerful. Virtual reality is just about now about to become a mainstream form with the promise of very rich and fully immersive experience. As the namely audience is very familiar, this vast quantity of media has a tremendous variety of agendas. And its sophistication can easily move beyond our ability to soundly consider and process it, especially for children. This past election season, once again, provides ample evidence for that. Media arts education, as we've formed with these standards and in our practice of using media arts tools and processes, does offer a powerful solution to this dilemma, whereby the full inclusion of media arts production and analysis in formal education, pre-K-12, can support students to become creatively empowered producers as well as critical consumers of content. But furthermore, and this is less recognized in the proposition of media arts as a new content area, students can gain a certain agency in the learning process and in their interaction with the larger world around them. Media arts has the potential to some degree to dissolve the walls of the classroom 
in the learning process and to be truly student-centered in its support for self-directed learning. The offering of media arts as a distinct arts discipline comes as a result of a three-year effort by the National Coalition for Core Arts Standards, as well as a decades-long history in various classrooms, such as my own, districts, and states, such as LUSD and South Carolina and Minnesota. These national arts education organizations listed here came together in a unified effort to develop new voluntary arts standards that are now available to all states and districts across the nation. The media arts st standards were developed by a team of 12 brilliant media arts writers from around the country and subsequently NCAS has collectively endorsed media arts as a distinct arts discipline. Here seen um, with its own aesthetic principles, tools, processes, and concepts. And you can get more information about these, this development at this website. In the most basic description, media arts is both a distinct and an overlapping discipline with the other arts disciplines. Here seen more as elements from a media arts point of view. So that would create these five arts disciplines working together, essentially, with media arts as kind of a nexus or intersecting point. Media arts is made up of several categories that encompass photo, graphics, motion graphics, animation, video and film, sound production, interactive design, and virtual design, including virtual reality, of course. Furthermore, there are combinations of these fo forms, such as multimedia and transmedia, which are becoming more familiar to the public as advertising appears across multiple media formats. If we look at our media arts-centered society, this bundle of forms is a type of cultural generator. The forms are common experience of the contemporary world. We now have a globally connected culture due to the instantaneity and ubiquity of media. Thus, these would be the broad range of products that are then available for media arts students to create and for teachers to use as the means to incorporate interdisciplinary project, design, and challenge-based learning in the classroom. So just as media arts exists within society, it's now available as a creative production space within the school for a very diverse and dynamic range of learning projects and events. This can integrate any and all arts and subject areas in more experiential or constructivist kinds of learning processes, where content is not just passes, passively received, but actively applied in meaningful and engaging ways. This very informal case study that I'm showing here of my own two kids shows just how the, how the availability of these tools creates the motivation to produce lots of multimedia. It should be noted here that I pulled way back from my media educator role in this case. The kids did all of this on their own for the most part without my prodding or coaching beyond a mere, hey, you can do this sort of introduction. Media production is not only easy access, it naturally self-scales in complexity and challenge. The students find the entry level pretty easy and then can self-direct to some degree towards higher levels of production. This shows the inherent motivating engagement that media arts production can have. Not to negate the very critical role of the teacher and of standards, but to evidence that, that the teacher can assume more of a facilitating role here. I now have some excerpts of student-produced works, um, which give a tangible sense of the educational potentials of media arts. This first piece is from Sweden, and it's of a first-grade classroom. It's actually a combined classroom, first- and second-grade classroom. Innan gjorde skapade så var det helt svart. This is just an excerpt, short piece, and I'm 
Sorry for the uh, formatting, but it's a little bit smaller frame that you'll see this peak. So, you know, this, this gives an example of students work together, can construct a, a world, uh, can integrate science concepts, and create their own media that basically uh, presents their learning of this process. This next piece what is, is uh, by a former student of mine. She was a 10th grader when she produced it. It ended up going into the Los Angeles Film Festival because it was so great of a work. And it was her own investigation into the, uh, into uh, contemporary hip hop culture, essentially, and its co-option by white culture, essentially. So let me just show this briefly, about a minute long. And what is white? What makes a person black? What makes a person white? Clothes, attitude, or dialogue? Does that make him black? Does that make her white? What makes a person black is their color. Probably their attitude. Does the music that we listen to determine who we are and how we act? Black music, like any other type of music, is a way to express yourself, whether it's instrumentally or vocally. It has been around for a very long time and has made a very large impact on society. The listeners are more diverse than they have ever been. Being African American has never been cooler. But has hip hop been taken over? Black on the inside or just wannabe all over? Why is white suburbia so hungry for black hip hop culture? Black music has been in America over 10 decades and there's nothing new about hip hop crossing over. This next piece is about Malala by Teenage girls Mike. here in the U.S. don't care much about an education. But Malala Yousafzai, a 16-year-old girl from Mangora, Pakistan, raised her life to have an education. Uh, we are human beings, and this is the part of our, of our human nature, that we don't learn the importance of anything until it's snatched from our hands. And when in early 2009, Malala began blogging for the BBC about living under the Taliban bomb's threat to, an, to to deny her an education. With a and then this short expert shows students working together to analyze and evaluate a piece and to improve an art media artwork. Around here, I think. Yeah. I think around here you could like before I get to the mom right there, you could show her like a zoom, a zoom, a zoom in like on her just right there, and then it zooms out, and then it shows you, then it shows that girl walking in, and then like, then you show her walking in. You already know that the mom's been drinking, and so you know she doesn't care. Yeah. And she's also right there, the girl. You see, she's disappointed. She just walks away. And then if you're not there. Who will be? Yeah, I think who will be will be a lot better. Who will? It's just kind yeah. of like. But the soundless thing, yeah, it works good like that. Without the sound, it works good though. Yeah, without the sound. Um, this is a article from the LA Times that shows student filmmakers who got drawn into a debate in local community about vaccination and its relation to autism and other factors and uh, they got kind of put in the middle of this debate in doing a film about the subject and so if you research that article you'll see where the students themselves became proactive and used their journalistic skills essentially to find out where they stood in this argument and to really put portray in a compelling way what they discovered in their research. So it shows how students uh, basically interact with their local community and become active participants, uh, civilly engaged essentially, in the process. Along those lines here are some projects as well uh, which show very interdisciplinary large-scale works 
and a, sort of a breadth of the types of production that could be done in media arts. In this project with my local PBS station KCT, we did a transmedia community portrait and then a design challenge where we investigated the community, portrayed the community in different media that was online, and then came up with ideas for community designs uh, for local areas that students saw as problematic that could be changed for the better. And so they had to prepare presentations for a local community to convince people of uh, using or uh, using resources towards that kind of a design. English language learners uh, could be using TV production as a format in in a classroom, in order in order to undergo a realistic language immersion. Uh, this gets them out of the passive mode that EL students are normally in, where they're not really sharing or expressing themselves in the classroom. I think uh, it's been measured that uh, an EL student will typically only engage about 5% of the day uh, in sort of uh, speaking in the classroom. So the, that totally gets the, this gets them totally out of that kind of mode and very interactive, working with groups, studying media, and then developing scripts and stories and so forth. Rehearsing for that, of course, you're practicing language skills, and then you're, you're reviewing what you actually did. So a lot of language immers immersion in this kind of a project. Video game design. And this is uh, a study project uh, at USC that was in LUSD, a number of classrooms, uh, media arts classrooms across the district, in which they were applying pre-algebraic and algebraic concepts in designing video games in a very simple game design format. And so here they're going through all of these algebraic reasoning actions in designing and constructing these experiential games. Now, student uh, it produced examples like these, just a few, really, among the large range available across the discipline, informed the production of the grade by grade standards for media arts. The major processes presented here creating, producing, etc are universal across the arts disciplines and give primary structure to media arts specific process components. These reflect pre to post production and iterative design processes as well as a connecting process for considering the various contexts of media. So the result of this is a robust and rigorous set of media arts competencies such as creativity, imagination, design thinking, collaboration, aesthetic and media literacies, critical analysis, but also systems and digital culture. Uh, this is an impressive set of contemporary skills and abilities that are generally not as available across our current traditional curriculum, but to which the educational establishment has been aspiring for some time. Media Arts provides that space in the school day for all of this to become integrated together with production and design processes. In addition, core content is seamlessly integrated and applied in a real-world, hands-on manner so that it has meaningful and purposeful context with greater longevity and transferability of that content outside of the classroom so the students retain it longer, essentially. This puts the student in the position of a cultural producer of new experiences and knowledge. So that's a very active position. And finally, in a position of active civic engagement and direct interaction with a local community and a global forum. Seen here in more detail, the stand are structured in a way that teachers will find supports their aspiration to the big ideas or enduring understandings of lifelong learning in the arts. So we see this enduring understanding here under connecting media artworks synthesize meaning and form cultural experience. 
Uh, in this co connecting process under the synthesize and relate process components, these standards support students in critically examining their own media as well as the diversity of media that they encounter. And then these would be examples of the student reflection prompts for these standards, which is what they should ponder for proficiency in media literacy. These are the multi-literacies that are embedded within the media arts production and reflection process that would support students to become more proactive within a media-based world. So in summary, Media Arts presents a rather transformative offering for contemporary education in its current transitions and for successfully preparing students to meet the complex challenges of the 21st century. Media Arts is holistic. It can work with all arts disciplines, subject areas, formats, and sensory and cognitive modalities and integrate them into unified projects and experiences. Media Arts moves beyond student-centered to become student-sourced. The student finds this discipline relevant and supportive of their own background, their own ability, and their own experience, their own culture and interests, and empowers their voice and innate curiosity to explore the world and form their own worlds of meaning. This ultimately fosters learning about the learning process itself towards becoming a mature, self-directed learner and problem solver. The student is engaged as a cultural producer who can meaningfully and proactively interact with his or her local community as well as in globally connected forums. This new creative space available in K through 12 education now needs to move forward to the formation of a nationwide community of support and interest to advocate for its inclusion with all the arts disciplines and adoption by states and districts. If people are interested in following this effort or contributing in any way, they can go to the website or email me directly. With that, I'll um, get, get out of the presentation mode. And I think that puts us back, correct? And I'm open for more discussion and any questions that you all might have. So. You know, I was writing some comments down as you were talking because I feel like so many of the words you were using are the words that we use when we talk about media literacy. And you were talking about being active participants, being uh, civically engaged, um, how media arts can be interdisciplinary. And so it's very interesting because obviously there's so much overlap between media arts and media literacy. And in the media literacy community and in the field of media literacy, we've definitely expanded the definition from just access and evaluation into creation because you had, you had said very well about um, going from this passive consumer to this active participant, which we see is, is definitely part of the media literacy world right now, is really seeing that, um, you know, true media literacy and the study and the teaching of it includes hands-on production work. Um, so I find it, I'm obviously really very excited about these media art standards. I think they're really important. I think that the way they overlap with media literacy is really important. Um, I guess what my first question really is is how do you how do you envision or what do you think is the actual application of these media art standards into the classroom? Like what you know, if I am a teacher that's or am I at a school that might not have a media arts program? How, how do we even pitch that to a school that is, you know, interested in it, but maybe not quite ready for it? How do we engage them in this conversation so that they start to include this work in, into their classrooms? That's a great question, and it's a big question, and it is the beginning of this next phase of work, essentially, is to present it to the larger audience to which it's available and let them know it is available. So it is this presentation. It's really crunching what I've been talking about into the simplest terms and then to provide uh, formats, essentially, for an exchange, a presentation of support, some basic curriculum and examples, to connections that are already out there. You namely already has curriculum. Common Sense Media already has curriculum. 
uh, various public uh, television stations already have curriculum. So there's a lot out there that can already be used and accessed. It's a matter of giving it a real uh, great title and, and face um, and then sort of uh, parsing out what are the basic steps of beginning such a process. And we certainly have the examples of projects that people can jump into pretty quickly um, that we've already presented to various faculty uh, around the country in basic ways. Uh, one way at National Art Education Association, their convention, uh, some good professional developments there that gave people really keys and a basic project. What can you do immediately tomorrow with a camera in the classroom? How can you set up groups, do some basic uh, presentation via video, for example? And to recognize it, begin to recognize it within this heading of media arts um, and therefore direct that conversation to a whole in-depth presentation of the standards and what the curriculum would look like in various phases as you're moving to a more robust, complex program based on what you have in resources and experience. But it, just as kids access this on very simple, basic ways, teachers can access it on very basic, simple levels. A simple camera, some photos, some compare and contrast between photos, or even photos that are already existing in textbooks, you know, could be used as the beginning of media literacy yeah. uh, units. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi. So this is Carl Carter. Um, I'm also on the um, Leadership Council for NAMLI, and I was really excited by what I'm seeing because a, a key concept of what I think is really important for education is that involvement, that student participation, that self-leading of an investigation into um, the, the media arts. Um, I really liked the idea of uh, combining in the visual arts, the, the math and the science that, um, that are involved. Um, I guess the question that I was bantering around in my head was, um, you know, I hear so many people complain that they need to teach to the test. Um, is there a way to, to bring this into uh, the classrooms that, that feel like they're being restricted or have no money for these other um, activities? Um, I mean, I currently would see that this would be a great opportunity, but um, how do we convince some other people? True, um, and that, that will always be a challenge as long as the test is very narrow and reductivist. You know, it's very specific to certain outcomes. I think common core, of course, standards are opening, opening that up a little bit more in terms of the kinds of processes that can be inclusive towards those higher end reasoning uh, processes, valuation processes, synthesizing processes, as well as like justifications for an argument and so forth based on evidence. Uh, definitely media arts incorporates writing processes inherently uh, and what it does is it basically reiterates the curriculum. It's a way of uh, students demonstrating the curriculum, reiterating it, rehearsing it, they're doing it over and over, and then they're looking at what they produced and seeing it over, and they're seeing each other's work and reviewing that as well, and they may be analyzing it as well. So it is a, a form of reiteration for them and rehearsal and review by seeing it over and over again. I mean, in the most basic way that that you know, it is, is an enhancement to the core curriculum. Next generation standards will be a little bit more experiential as well, not quite so broad in the number of standards, more in depth into the process. Students can get more into projects where they're demonstrating these concepts. And so if you think of Bill Nye, <laughs> how do students create a little video that shows that they have understood this basic concept, do it in a fun and engaging way, they're learning some of the media arts processes, of course, while they're doing that. So there are any number of ways to integrate this, to streamline it, and I think it does deepen the learning experience. It transfers it into a new modality, uh, makes it interesting to the student as well. So 
I think it's a benefit to core content as well, uh, to the test, if you will. But I think tests are becoming a little bit more uh, experiential as well. And I think education in total is really understanding that there needs to be this deeper, broader picture um, in terms of how students actually do learn things. We've been talking a lot, or and I've been thinking a lot about media literacy is not um, something that you teach, but a way in which you teach. And I feel like that's the same with media arts. I feel as if you know it's not necessarily about teaching media arts; it's about using media arts to teach so so many other things. And I think that if that's the mm -hmm. conversation that um, we can have, because that would help get rid of this conversation like this is an add-on, that this is something else we're asking teachers to do or something else we're asking schools to do, that actually it's, it's the tool, it's the vehicle to, to teach all of these other things and bringing media arts into the, into the science classroom to teach science. It's not, it's not necessarily about teaching media literacy or media arts. It's using those things to teach other things. And I think that um, if we can start having that conversation as a culture and at, you know, with the teachers and with administrations and, you know, that would help us um, stop thinking about it or having people stop thinking about it as, are you really asking us to learn something else or do something else? That it's really, you know, a way to do right. what they're already doing in, a, in maybe a, a more engaging way, possibly. For sure. And, um, you know, just an example, just many activities that teachers are already engaged in can transfer so easily into a media project. So right. students are doing a PowerPoint you know, what's mm -hmm. the difference if you put a camera in front of them <laughs> and capture them while they're doing the PowerPoint? Suddenly yeah. it's becoming more of a media arts production. Okay, And then they can review that, actually, and they might be interested in looking at themselves and how they present. Um, but just in a very basic way, yes, it, it's very transferable uh, across the board. Um, nevertheless, they do need, I think, some media arts experience you know, as its own arts discipline as well, so. So I did have another question, Carl. I didn't want to cut you off, though, if you were going to ask another one. Okay, so I, I really want to understand um, what Namely can do, what Namely members can do to to move this forward and to, you know, you mentioned about nationwide, uh, nationwide inclusion and adoption, so the activist in me wants to know, well, what can we do now? So, so if other Namely members are watching and they want to really help support the inclusion of these standards around the country, what can we do? Uh, first of all, sign up in support. I don't have, or we don't have, the website ready for this. I mean, we're still in this very initial phase of development. But be ready, basically, for some information to come that will be broadcast and shared and distributed that basically presents a process for how one can support this effort. Uh, at this moment, various states are in uh, various uh, stages of considering the new art standards for adoption. So they're actually moving way ahead of us as media arts in its nascency as a nationally presented discipline. So it's very difficult to catch up at this point with how that process might unfold over the next couple of months. But for example, in California, that decision is going to be made within the next few months. Oh, wow. um, so becoming aware of that process might be a good step and you know, putting in one's voice uh, in that process, uh, if it's possible, if one is available to that. Uh, there is this media arts uh, education website. I would look there, uh, mediaartseducation.org, and look for any updates periodically. I would imagine by this, this winter, essentially, that uh, a, a package of inf information is going to begin, begin to be distributed. Mm -hmm. that will basically explain a process and give a, a place for people to sign on in support. 
just so we can have a broad range of interest and support from various individuals, organizations around the country. That alone, you know, is enough to uh, perk up the ears of legislators, of the decision makers, administrators in various states and districts to realize that uh, this has broad-based support. It has uh, support across a number of types of organizations, such as Namely, such as NAMAC, such as uh, Motion Picture Industry, for example, might be somebody or an organization that would support. So we're looking for how the, this range of community basically signs on and presents uh, their interest in this and the need for this in contemporary education. Right. Stay tuned, in other words. You know, the information is, is to come. Carl, do you have anything to add? We're, we're try to stay within a half hour. We're a little bit over, so um, if we want to stay within our lines. We should probably start wrapping up. Okay, well, I just wanted to thank Carl so much for setting this up um, and thank him for being a part of the Leadership Council. And thank you, James, for taking the time out of your evening to record this. And we will definitely spread the word and we will get this out to our members. And hopefully we'll be able to help um, as things move along. So thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Robert. Yeah, it looked great. Thanks, Dane. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, guys. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.